Amen. If he's your Lord tonight, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. It's great to be back on this Sunday evening in uh, the Lord's house here at Timberlake Baptist Church. Who's ready for a blessing tonight? Say hallelujah again. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. We're going to go ahead and kick things off with our prayer time. Uh, and as I pray out loud, let's all go ahead and uh, pray together. You know, he can answer all our prayers at the same time. Amen. What a wonderful God we serve. So let us pray at this time. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you for our many blessings, God. Lord, we just thank you so much for sending your only Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. We're so thankful for our salvation, Lord. Thank you for making a way for us to be able to go to heaven, Lord. And we're so thankful and honored to call you our Lord. Lord, we just thank you so much for the amazing time we've already had in your house today in the morning time, Lord. We just pray that they continue to overflow here in the uh, evening hour as well, God. Lord, we just pray you continue to be with the choir as they sing, be with the special, Lord, and just be with the preaching of your word. And Lord, just be with all your children and every person in your house, Lord. I just pray you just open our ears and open our hearts and help us just to cling on to every word that is preached out of your precious and holy word. But we ask you just to please just be with uh, everybody listening on internal broadcasting and Facebook Live as well. It's a blessing to have them tuning in, listening uh, as well. <clears throat> and Lord, as we get to our prayer list tonight, Lord, we ask you to please be with Florence Richardson and his heart. We ask you to continue to be with Brianna Baldridge, Lord, and an upcoming surgery he's going to have. J.B. Baldridge, Sheila Barker, Irene Bell, Jacoby Bradner, Brenda Bryan, Earl and Barbara Clarkson, Jamie Cole, E.T. and Deborah Connor. Jean Connor, Kathy Crane with Radiation, Jack and Gail Dale, Scott and Scotty Dean, Linda Gail Durham, Joe and Joyce Earp, Mallory and Emma Hamlet, Monica Green, Faith Ann Hawley, April Henderson, Eugene Henderson, Janice Hodges, Wayne and Pam Hudson, Pastor and Sister Hussey, Maureen Johnson, uh, please be with my unspoken Lord, Jerry Lewis, Shelby Martin, Angeline Merriam, Gary McCullum, John, John and Linda Mitchell, Angie Moore on her shoulder, Toby Moore, Linda Moorefield, Keith Moorefield, I ask you to please be with Margie Morris, Nancy Newton, Angie Oaks, Donald Owens, um, Christy Payne, Lord in Unspoken Needs, Cheryl Podovinsky in Broken Ankle, Danny Ray, Robert and Vicki Reed, James Richardson, Bill and Judy Snow, Eileen Tickle, Evelyn and Wallington has cancer, as well as Nathan Wells who has cancer, Lord. We ask you to please be with Francis White, Connie Wiles, Kelly Wood, Harold Yancey. We ask you to please be with John Williams, Lord, who had a stroke, Alan Taylor, who's in Lynchburg General, and please be with Gary Salmons and his unspoken needs, Lord. Lord, we ask you to please be with all the requests on our prayer list tonight and just answer each one according to your precious and holy will. And Lord, just meet with every need of every heart that's in attendance, Lord, and I just pray you just answer each one according to your precious and holy will. Please be, be with our service here today, Lord. I pray that you just continue to pour blessings upon us, Lord. And I ask you just to please be with uh, everybody in attendance. Someone that does not know you as Lord and Savior, we pray today be the day of their salvation. Lord, we just love you and thank you for all you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, this time I'll turn back over to Miss Diane and the choir.
hand, we put it in a trust in a God who died for us. Amen? Right. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. We're all going to join in on the fun at this time. Turn all the way over to page 412. We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse of Onward, Christian Soldier. Page 412, first, second, and fourth verse. <clears throat> Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before Christ the time we're going to have our uh, ushers make their way up to receive our Sunday night offering and as they're making their way up if you've got your bulletin go ahead and get those out got a few announcements and upcoming events we have here at the church we see that next week we'll be having homecoming 2024 Sunday June 2nd at 10 30 it'll be no Sunday school it'll be one service at 10 30 please be back and there will be dinner on the grounds following the service and we'll be blessed by the Needhams on our homecoming next week. And chicken and soft drinks are provided. Please bring enough for your family plus one Stan Moorefield sides. So, amen. We're going to eat good that day. Amen. All right. We got VBS coming up. I was making sure the dog won't go sneak up on me at the end of the day. So we got VBS coming up, so let's be ensure that we are uh, praying and that we're inviting every kid that we know, ages 2 to 19, and it will be the big uh, TBC's Big Top Spectacular, the greatest show. That will be Sunday, June 9th uh, through Friday, June 14th. It is 6.30 to 8.45 every night. And uh, Camp Surrender is right around the corner. It will be July 7th through the 11th, and there will be sponsorships needed. And they are $80 a piece. So if you'd like to give, see Brother Kim Bipperman. And also, if you're not doing anything this Tuesday, we've got two things going on this Tuesday. First, uh, in Bible study, they will be in the fellowship hall. They'll be in the book of 1 Peter. That will be at Tuesday at 1 p.m. And come on back uh, at 6 p.m. in our new church land in Blairs. We'll be having our prayer meeting, prayer in Blairs. That will be uh, May 28th at 6 p.m. And Alan Cardwell will be the special speaker. So let's be, make sure that we make plans to be there and be in much prayer for all the Lord's going to do. <clears throat> Before we 
we take up our offering, we have a uh, card uh, we was asked to read this uh, evening. It says, thank you to everyone from the family of Audrey Hoskins, <clears throat> Reverend Yancey and Timberlake Church family. Thank you for the years of thoughts and prayers lifted up to Mama as she was carried to her new home with declining um, health. She loved her Timberlake family. Thank you for the visits and the calls over the years and for the uh, faithful Sean for coming and reading her the newsletters and most especially for his last visit at bedside with his special goodbye. We'll see you in heaven. Prayer, prayer with her whole family around her bed. He was a delight in her day when uh, he came to see her. We appreciate the grand setup of paper products sent by the church. The food and the visits at the house were delicious and enjoyed by our whole family and as we celebrated her life. Love you, church, in Christ. Pam, Kathy, and family. So let's be sure to remember them in prayer. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> and at this time, we're going to uh, go to our offering. Let's remember that our white envelopes are for our tithes and offering, and brown envelopes are for our building fund. And if you don't have cash and check in-house, Brother Ken Burpham is in the back with a debit credit card machine if you'd like to give your tithes and offering that way as well. And if you're listening by way of Internet or Facebook Live, if you'd like to give, there's one of two ways uh, that you can give as well. You can go to www.strengthfortheday.com, click on our secure link at the top, or you can give by way of mail. Send it to P.O. Box 10004, Danbury, Virginia, 24543. And at this time, we're going to have Brother Sean Horvitt come up and bless our offering tonight. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, bless the offering, bless it to further your kingdom, bless those that give, Lord, and pray that if anybody here that's lost, I pray for their salvation. Anybody listen, I pray for their salvation. Ask all these things in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for giving back to the Lord tonight. Let's give our instrumentals a hand for their faithfulness. Amen. <clears throat> if you have your uh, Bibles, please turn to Ezra chapter 7, verse 6, as Hands of Glory comes to perform to you tonight. Uh, and that's just a way of introduction uh, for the song. You know, we know that our God is able to do anything and everything better than we can even imagine. Amen. He can bring us through any storm. He can bring us through any trial. He can bring us through the fire. I believe that tonight. How about you guys? And I'm going to serve him. Even if the stars fall out of heaven, I'm going to serve him. Amen? And I hope that's the same uh, outlook that you have as well. Because even if he doesn't, I hope you serve him. And it doesn't matter what you're going through, what you're going to go through, or what you're going to face tomorrow, he will be with you. And I pray today that your prayer is the same as mine. Even if, I'll be with you. Amen. They say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now I'm losing bad. I've stood on this stage night after night, reminding the broken it'll be all right. But right now, It's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down. But what will I say when I'm held to the flame like I am?
They say it only takes a little faith to move a mountain. Well, good thing a little faith is all I have right now. God, when you choose to leave mountains unmovable. Thank you. Take your Bibles and turn to Ezra chapter 7, verse 6. We started talking this morning about conversation and the hand of the Lord. Uh, you have to have a conversation with God for his hand to be upon your life. We talked about it's a necessity in any relationship in our life uh, to have conversation. And God's no exception to that rule. And we talked about verse 22 about talking. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me. And he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will, I will talk with thee. God wants to talk to you. He wants to have a conversation with you. Then we looked at uh, uh, the next verse there, and we talked about together in verse 28. And hath extended mercy unto me before the king, and his counselors before all the king's mighty princes. And I was strengthened as the hand of the Lord of God was upon me. And I gathered together out of Israel chief men to go up with me. Now, that's, of course, talking about Ezra and Nehemiah who rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem after the captivity. And they had to go and they had to talk to the worldly king to get permission to go back and to rebuild the walls and rebuild the city. And this is what Ezra was talking about. He said, I went and talked to the king and I couldn't believe it. God's hand was on me. God's hand was upon me. And I had favor with the worldly king, and he worked with me and allowed us to go back and rebuild the walls. Ezra didn't do that. The hand of God did that. But if Ezra hadn't have been in conversation with God and close to God and drawing nigh to God, he would have never had the hand of God upon him so that God could reach through him and touch the king and the king allow him and Nehemiah and the band of Israelites to come back and do that work. When God's hand's truly upon you, you have favor with God and you have favor with man. Now let me help you. Did you hear what I just said? 
let me help you. Listen to me carefully. I don't know why it is in this world today we think controversy and conflict is the solution to problems. It is not. Especially in the house of God. To uh, think that conflict and arguing and fussing and bickering is going to get anything accomplished is absolute foolishness. Say amen or oh me. There's no place for that. If the hand of God's upon you, you have favor with God and you have favor with men, you have favor with the saved, and you have favor with the lost. So why would you need to argue? And fuss? Listen, if you catch yourself arguing and fussing, complaining and griping and throwing a fit, let me tell you something. The hand of God's not upon you either. You're far away from God because God doesn't need that kind of stuff to get his work done. Say amen. Okay, some of you let me help you and some of you didn't. We'll move on. A person who's always at odds with others and stirring up divisions is far, far away from God. If the hand of the Lord's upon you, what grieves him grieves you. And you know what grieves God? The lost souls. Some of the stuff we worry about God's not even concerned about. Hadn't even crossed his mind. But it crosses yours because you're listening to the enemy. You're having conversations with the enemy instead of having conversations with the one who loves you the most. The division and strife will hurt you and not enthuse you. Division is, listen, being angry. And having division and strife is going to encourage absolutely no one. But you know what? Talking to God and leaving problems at his feet and letting him take care of them takes you to another level. Say amen. Takes you to a level of joy. The hand of the Lord brings sweet and strong togetherness, not separation, not uh, fighting and wars and rumors of wars. Constructive conversations between you and God and you and fellow servants of God will always be more than you'll ever believe. Why? Because, listen, we're people of fellowship. Amen? Fellowship with God and fellowship with each other. And it ought to be God's way. So we need to do this, as we said in verse 28, together. Together we do this with God. Together we do this with each other. It's a team effort. Now, that don't mean there ain't going to be problems. I'm looking at a room full of them. <laughs> We're going to have problems because there's an enemy. The problems don't come from God. They come from the enemy. But here's the key. God controls the enemy. If he controls the enemy, he'll take care of all these problems. Don't try to take care of yourself because your help may be more damaged than good. But God always works things out. All right, let's move on to C tonight, verse 6. Trust him. This Ezra went up from Babylon, and he was re a ready scribe. That's a copy of the scriptures. In the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. And the king granted him, Ezra, all his requests according to what? The hand of the Lord, his God, upon him. Do you understand tonight how important it is for you to have the hand of God on you? Not just the preacher. Yeah, the preacher's got to have the hand of God just like you do. But you, I don't care what your responsibility is. I don't care who you are. You need the hand of God upon you. And if the hand of God's upon us, we'll act like we're supposed to, we'll walk like we're supposed to, we'll talk like we're supposed to, we'll serve like we're supposed to. Say amen. You see, God trusted Ezra, and Ezra trusted God, and miraculous things took place. If miracles are not transpiring in your life and around you, the hand of God is not upon you. Are you listening? miracles, things you just don't expect to happen. Things work out and God makes things work perfectly. God's hand needs to be upon you. And when the hand of God's upon you, you have favor with God. Amen. Look at Proverbs 21.1. Very important verse. The king's heart, and this is proved here in this scripture, is in the hand of the Lord. And as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Now let's all go down to Danville tonight and change the course of Dan River. I'd be going by myself. 
because you all know that's a task that is far beyond a, a several human beings to take care of. If you're going to do that, you'd have to have a bunch of equipment, a lot of time and effort. Amen? But God can change the mind of a man or a woman just like that. He can change it quicker than you can imagine. That's why arguing doesn't solve a thing. Praying solves everything. God's the one who can turn things around. God's the one who can put things together. You cannot miss the connection of the Word of God and having the hand of God upon you. He said, I was a copy of the Scripture. You know why Ezra trusted God so much? He wrote every word he said more than once. He was a copy of the Scriptures. He made copies for other people. That was an important job back in the Old Testament. It was a serious job that not one jot nor one tittle was out of place, that it was copied perfectly because it was the Word of God that he was copying. Folks, I'm telling you, the more the Word of God you have in your life, the more the hand of God's going to be upon you. And I don't know about you, but I need both of God's hands on me. Say amen. I need both hands of God on me. Uh, they're synonymous, the Word of God and the hand of God. These, the, this king trusted Ezra because he had an honorable and a virtuous character that was developed in him through faith and obedience to the Word of God. Let me tell you something that doesn't exist today is men and women of character. That's somebody you can trust. Now, I want to tell you something. I'm not trying to play politics. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. When I was a young man just getting into the world, I was in 11th grade when Ronald Reagan was elected president of the United States. And boy, they talked about him like he was a four-legged uh, wolf. He was the worst thing that ever happened to them. Let me tell you something. Ronald Reagan was one of the greatest presidents our country has ever known. Not because he was the smartest man that ever lived, because he wasn't. But he was a man of character. He was a man who would give you his word and you could believe him. You could believe him and trust him. And when he said he was going to do something, that's what he did. And he said, I'm going to tear this wall down. And what happened? They tore the wall down. He was a man of character. Now, that's not just on the presidential field. Let me tell you something. You've got to have people of character in your life. You've got to be a person of character. Let me tell you, there's been some people, I didn't trust them no farther than I saw them. Because they didn't have any character. None whatsoever. No character at all. Come in my office one day. This has been years ago, so don't try to figure out who it is. You won't. And I've been here 26 years. A lot of dead rats between here and there. Say amen. But I, I, I come in my office one day and open the door and somebody was going through my garbage can. Now, I, I learned some things in life. Just shut up and see what they say. <laughs> Just shut up and see what they say. And I'm standing there looking at that person, that person rumbling through my garbage. I, 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 I dropped something in here. I, st I started to say, well, why were you in here dropping something in there? But I was, I, I am a person of character. I, I won't, I done already caught them, say amen or oh me. From that day forward, I didn't trust that person no further than I could see them. Why? Because they didn't have any what? Character. They done lost the character in my eyes. And I didn't trust them no more. And folks, this is why the world doesn't trust the church anymore. The people of the church have lost their character in the world they live in. A Christian ought to have character above all things. And I'm going to tell you something. It's not easy to keep a good character. The only way you can do it, now here it comes. You should have seen it coming like a light bulb. How do you have character? You've got to have a hand of God on you. You got the hand of God on you, you'll have character. And if you're going to have character, it comes from the Word of God. It's a shame that people die and go to heaven and have never read the Bible from front to cover. It's a shame people die and go to heaven and they've never studied the Bible completely from front to cover. They didn't read it every day. Let me tell you something. If you eat three times a day, you ought to read your Bible three times a day character. I want to be like Christ. I want to have his character. And the only way you're going to be like him is to study about him and to know his word. Now pat your hand on it. Pat yourself on the back. You're in church tonight. You're in the right place. I thank God you're here. But 
you will have more of an opportunity to have character than those who didn't show up. So amen. We're going to want to be people of character. Now, with Ezra, God was in the middle of all of everything going on in Ezra's life. The hand of God in Ezra's life gave him favor with, er, with an earthly potentate. He had favor. Same thing happened with Joseph. He found favor with Pharaoh because he was a man of character. He would not do wrong. He would not give in to Pharaoh's wife. Say amen. He would not be bitter because he was in prison for something he didn't do. He didn't hate his brothers when he had right to. If anybody had had right to hate their brothers for selling him into slavery, he had the right to. But he, look, he went in a corner and cried his eyes out. And God's hand was upon him. And he forgave his brothers. Let me tell you something. Nowadays, Christians, if they chew gum on the wrong side of the mouth, they get mad at each other. Don't speak for nine years. That's stupid. Just stupid, as Ruby used to say. Just stupid. We ought to have character. And listen, if you don't have character, it's sure evidence of how much time you have not spent in the Word of God and prayer. Say amen. Now, if God's hand is upon you and I, God will make his ways in the world and the people of this world especially for you and I to complete his will and his work. If God has a will, and he does. If God has a purpose, and he does. And we're all a part of it. I'm here to tell you tonight, everybody in this room is part of God's will. Don't say, well, I'm going to be a spectator. There's several things the church don't need. Spectators, agitators, there's all kind of taters ought not be in the church. Huh? But let me tell you something, folks. God has a plan for all of us. And let me say this tonight. You better think about what you preach you're saying because I love you. You may not think so because the plows down so deep, but I love you. If you've got a talent for God and you're not exercising that talent for him, shame on you. Shame on you because God gave you that time. Well, I got an attitude. Throw your attitude away and get some character. So, so hurt by feelings. Grow up. It's going to be hurt again before it's over. It ain't the first time you had your feelings hurt. It ain't going to be the last time. We use all these little flimsy excuses not to exercise our talents and not to be obedient to God. And if you don't use your talents for God, and you're not, if you don't have, you've got to have character with men, but you've got to have some character with God. God gave you that talent. He gave you that ability. He gave you that responsibility in your life. And if you don't use it, you don't have any character with God. Amen, Brother Walter. You're doing such a good job. It's time to stop being babies. It's time to be men and women of God. It's time to have the hand of God upon us. Because God can't have his hand upon you if you're copping an attitude. Now, you can tell who watches TV more than to read the Bible. they got an attitude. They do. Because that's all these TV programs do is cop attitudes. And they think it's cute. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, it's not cute. The church is in critical condition because you pay more attention to ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox, and them other 230 stations on TV, then you do what God is trying to do in your life. What God's trying to do in your life is more important than anything else you'll do. And it's sad if you miss the boat. It's sad if you miss the boat. And so many Christians are missing the boat today because they've allowed their attitude to destroy their character. And they don't have any character with God. And they don't have any character in men. Let me make this a little simpler for you. Having character means somebody can trust you. It means somebody can, you, you can trust. Let me tell you something. When I was growing up, I knew who I could trust and who I couldn't trust. I knew who had, had developed a relationship with me. I could trust them. I knew. I knew that if something in my life, my mom and daddy, I could trust my mom and daddy. I knew I could trust Ruby and Tom. I knew I could trust Mama Gertrude. I knew I could trust them. We had built, our, if they needed me, I was there. If I needed them, they were there. We trusted each other. And we knew 
that we would stand by each other through thick and thin. And yes, we made each other mad all the time. But it didn't last long. Why? Because all of us lose our cool. All of us lose our temper. I was in the hallway back there, minding my own business out there in the parking. And all of a sudden, I noticed this little girl was squalling. And she had had a sucker in her mouth. And she didn't have that sucker no more. Who had it, Manny? <laughs> I love Manny had the sucker. He done stole that little girl's sucker. He said he was throwing it away. I don't know. I'm not going to get in an argument with him. But he had that little girl's sucker, and he was gone. And she didn't have that sucker no more. Hey, folks, let me tell you something. You can read into anything you want to. Say amen. You can cause controversy anyway. But folks, look. It's time we stop judging each other. Start trusting God and trusting each other. If somebody does you wrong, you don't need to get even with them. Let God handle it. If you handle it, you might get too rough or you might be too easy. But God will handle it just right. We got to be adults. We got to have some character. You can't blow a gasket every time you turn a corner. I'm going to move on. I see some of y'all wiggling out there. And it ain't no music playing. Who was this king? that Ezra was dealing with. Let's look at verse 11. Now this was a copy of the letter to King Artaxerxes. How many of y'all know who King Artaxerxes was? Two or three of you. That was Esther's husband. Esther's husband. Uh, do you think she might have had a little influence on him? I think Esther had a whole lot of influence on King Artaxerxes. And when Ezra come, she looked at him and says, you want some supper tonight, you better treat that man good. <laughs> come on now, say amen or on me. Hey, she had some influence over this king. What are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to say God's working in a whole lot of areas you don't even know about. It. He's working through a whole lot of people you don't even know about. It. He's doing things. And if you mess him up, hello, if you mess him up in what he's trying to do because you don't have character, <whistles> judgment city of Christ is not going to be good for you. We better be careful that we don't mess up God's plans. We get so worried about our plans. I told y'all I just come off one vacation and me and Jason's planning another one. And don't mess with my plans. Don't mess me up. I'm going to work hard all summer. I'm going to work hard all fall. And then come the second week in November, I'm leaving y'all. I'm going to take a week's vacation. I'm going to Pigeon Forge and go to see Paula Dean. I'm going to go to the peddler. If you don't know what the peddler is, go to, go to Gatlinburg and go to the peddler. You'll find out they roll them stakes out there and you pick out what you want. Say amen or oh me. I got plans. Now you want to cross me? You mess my plans up. Hello? Jason better cross every T and dot every I. He better make sure them reservations is right. Don't mess my, don't mess my vacation up. But how many times have you and I listened to somebody else or we cop the attitude and we mess God's plans up for our life? And you know what we do as human beings. We want to blame God and everybody else, but it ain't nobody's fault but your own because you acted like a two-year-old instead of a child of God. Don't mess God's plans up because you're going to pay a heavy price if you do. It says, now that this copy of this letter the king Artaxerxes gave unto Ezra the priest, the scribe, and even the scribe of the words of the commandments of the Lord, and of his statues of Israel. This was Esther's husband. Now tell me God can't work in the affairs of men on our behalf. A long time before Ezra ever showed up in that king's power, he'd done already met Esther, and they'd done already killed Mordecai. So amen. Mordecai, I'm sorry, Haman. Mordecai, stop correcting me. I'll correct myself. I'll correct myself. Done killed Haman. They was going to kill Mordecai, her uncle. And you know what Mordecai did? He was a man of what? He was a man of character. 
And you know what God did? He took care of Mordecai. He took care of Esther. And he took care of Haman too. He took care of Haman too. He took care of it all. Why? Because Mordecai was a man of character. Esther was a woman of character. And Haman was not. And the very gallows he built for Mordecai, Haman swung on those gallows himself. I'm trying to tell you tonight how important it is to have the hand of God on your life. I'm trying to help you to find your place under the hand of God so God can take our little measly lives and make something out of it. Sometimes when I'm writing those books or I'm getting ready to mail them out, I think I'm just wasting my time. Brother Mike come across the room, handed me a letter somebody sent me this week. Right in the middle of the letter, thank you for your Bible study books. They are such a help. I don't know how God's using those things. I was sitting in, sitting in church minding my own business. That's better than some of y'all do. Some of y'all listen. The rest of y'all sleep. I was sitting in church last Sunday morning. I don't ever get to sit in church. I'm always on the platform. I'm always preaching. I'm always doing my job. But last Sunday morning, I won't preach it. I was sitting in the pew just like y'all. And I'm sitting there minding my own business, enjoying not having to do nothing, but just sit there on my hind end and just watch what's going on. And some woman come up behind me and patted me on the shoulder and says, you don't know me, but I know you. That'll scare the mortal life out of you. It will scare you slam to death. And, but here's what she said to me. When you're sitting there, she'll tell you, she's not going to lie. She said, she said, I want you to know I'm on your side. And she shook my hand. Now look, there's a difference in a handshake and a money shake. She had some money in that hand. She said, I want you to know I love you and I appreciate you preaching. I automatically started loving her right then and there. Say amen. <laughs> huh? I said, I love you too, sister. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Minding my own business. You see, folks? I'm not trying to brag on the money part. What I'm trying to say is here's a woman who I didn't know. I wouldn't have known her from nobody. But she sure have been listening to me. She sure have been listening to that radio in Greenville, South Carolina. I was riding church this morning. My phone started lighting up. When my phone lights up on the way to church, he's done done something stupid. And I'm pointing at Jamie. He done done something stupid. And I'll shut up, let me preach my message. You and her both need to come to the altar tonight when this thing's over with. I picked that phone up and I said, Can't get the radio station. I knew right then the phone rang, it was him. He knew he'd better call before I called him. Say amen. Streaming's down, streaming's down. We can't get it. We're working on it. I said, Okay, okay. I texted her back. I said, We're working on it. Keep listening. We'll be back before too long. And I think before preaching, they had the streaming back up. But you know what? That's a good problem to have. Somebody in uh, North Carolina won't listen to the radio of our church on Sunday morning. Folks, listen. I don't want to mess up what God's doing. I don't want to mess up what God's doing. You all not want to mess up what God's doing. Why? Because God's doing some great things. And we've got to have our hand, our hand, his hand upon us for these great things to happen. Or they won't happen at all. Now, God, tell me God can't work in the affairs of men on our behalf. He can. He can. Now, look at verse 1 of Ezekiel 37 and 1. Take him. And the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of what? Now, look. That's a graveyard. I don't care how you cover it. And the last place you'll ever see Walter Yance is in a graveyard unless I have to be there. And as soon as I'm done in the graveyard, I'm out of there. I'm scared of him. I don't, I don't want that undertaker to knock me over in that hole. Say, preach, ain't no under Yes, they can. Let me tell you one thing. I was doing a funeral Wednesday. And, of course, my feet just give me a fit. So I said, Wendy, you take my chair. Set me a chair over beside the podium and while they play, I, you know, I've never understood why at a graveside they got to have 50 songs at a graveside, but they do. So I sat down while they played them songs. So I sat down while they played the song. 
So I went over and sat in my chair before it got started, and I said, uh-oh. I started doing this. And I said, how in the world? I done sunk six inches down in the ground. And I'm sitting there, stop laughing at me. She done walked all the way on the other side looking at me. And I'm going, and I'm sitting right side the casket going, I said, she got high hopes. That's me going down in that hole. I got a feeling. But about that time, God blessed me. Here come the undertaker. I said, give me your hand. His eyes got about that big around. He said, why? I said, just give me your hand. <laughs> he pulled me up and I, we moved that chair somewhere else and I sit down real easy. That's a solid ground, praise the Lord. Amen. I don't like graveyards, but I know one day they'll drop me down in the hole, but I won't know it. Say amen. That day I knew it, sitting right side that thing, I thought, I'm going down there and see all them worms wiggling and all that mess. I didn't want no part of that. Let me tell you something, folks. Graveyard's not where you want to be. You want to be where things is live and kicking. Say amen. Now listen to me. The hand of God was even with him. Ezekiel in the graveyard. When everything else was dead, God was still with him. I don't care what's going on around you. I don't care how dead it is around you or how bad it really looks. You just remember one thing. If God's hand on you, you'll be fine in the graveyard or in the church house. You'll be all right wherever you are. God sat Ezekiel down in a graveyard to show him something and to prophesy to him. We may not understand why God's hand is taking us where he's taking us, but if we'll just let him take care of us and let him be with us, he can take that which we think is sad and make it glad. Say amen. amen. I like when old Maze Jackson used to preach that, preach that message, go online and type in Maze Jackson, and God will turn it around. I can hear him now preaching that message. God will turn it around, and he will. You can be anywhere in the world, and if God's hand's on you, he'll turn it around. Them dead bones came to life. Now, God better be with me when that happens because I'm going to run. <laughs> I don't want to be around those zombies. Say amen. But those bones come back to life, and Ezekiel saw that prophecy there. God allowed him to see something. No, listen to me. Nobody else saw. When God's hands on you, he'll show you things nobody else can see but you and him. Because he loves you. Say amen. amen. Oh, listen to me. We may not understand it, but God's there with us and he'll show us great truths and great mysteries. Look at Psalms 46.10. Be still and know that I am God and I will be exalted among the what? The heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I don't know about you, but that's enough for me, Selah. Amen. He's with me no matter what's happening. Let's look at tenderness in 2 Kings 3.15. But now bring me uh, a minstrel. That's somebody who plays music, folks. And it came to pass when the minstrel played, the hand of God came upon him. In times of stress and conflict, if the hand of the Lord is upon us, we will receive tenderness, compassion, and comfort and peace from his hand if we're just with him. Be amazing to you what a good old gospel song will do for you when you're depressed. We all live there. We all have problems. We all get depressed, discouraged, defeated, depressed, and despondent. Don't ask me for another day. That's all I got. But that's enough. Say amen. I don't care what you're going through. He's with you. Music and the hand of the Lord work together to draw our focus back to him. Country music will either make you sad or drive you to do bad things. I saw it, that, that stupid jelly roll the other night. You know what? Somebody sat down and listened to that jelly roll. He was crying about it. Oh, I got it so bad. It was going to be all right. I thought, you idiot. You dummy. Why don't you just get saved and tell everybody God will make it all right? He wanted everybody to feel sorry for him. If I had tattoos all over my face, I'd feel sorry for him. Somebody feel sorry for me too. Say amen. Just crazy. Jelly roll. He ain't no jelly roll. He's a persimmon roll. He's old sourpuss. That's what he is. I don't want to hear nothing he's got to say. Man, give me the hopper. Say amen. Give me Gold City. Uh, give me greater vision. Give me something to make me happy. Say amen. 
Riding down the road this morning, Greater Vision was on the radio. When he said, is that Greater Vision? I said, it sure is. Turn it up, praise God. Hey, Greater Vision, Hoppers. But give me some good gospel music. Say amen. amen. Give me some good rock music lies to you and lead you down the track of dark alleys. And it may end in the destruction or even death or suicide. Classical music tends to drive men uh, to self-satisfaction, self-gratification. And that's always away from the Lord, not towards God. Say amen. You've got to be crazy to listen to that stuff. Ooh. You won't ever catch me at an opera, I can guarantee you that. Oh, listen, but godly music always points you to one who can help sustain and empower you. Say amen right there. I don't know about you, but I'm glad God's on my side. I'm glad he's with me. Ephesians 5.19 says, always. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus who? Yourselves means this is personal melody in your heart. Your heart means it's between you and the Lord. This is not public, but private and personal. One day I'm sitting back at my desk and I'm having a hallelujah spell. I done got on YouTube, done found the greens. I done found some old music. I, I used to love new music, but I done got old, so now I like old music. You get that old music. And when he come running, looking around the corner, you, you, you all right? What do you mean, Lawrence? It sound like you're dying back here. He said, you get on back on the other end. Me and God's having a good time. It might sound like you be dying, but we having a good time in here, singing this good old gospel music. Hey, it's between you and the Lord. It's about as bad as that day I'm in the office trying to do some work. And I heard a ruckus going on in the radio room. It sounded like somebody dying. I run in there and Sean's, oh, I thought he was having a seizure. I started to grab and pull his tongue out. He said, what are you doing? I said, you're having a seizure. He said, no, I'm singing with this group right here. He had headphones on. I said, son, you're better off just to listen. You're just better off to listen. Well, let me preach my message. It's, a, it's a water flowing that way. I mean, it's just bad. Hey, listen to me. As between him and God, I just need to stay out of it. See, if you'd been quiet, you'd have heard that instead of interrupting me. That's between me and him and God. It won't be, I won't involved. That won't none of my business. So you go home, just have a good time with God. Hey, say amen. Get on the spot where the glory comes out. Sing to the Lord out of love and adoration. And we'll, I'm going to give you this and I'm going to quit. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Admonishing. Let the word of Christ dwell what? Richly in all wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Psalms were songs written for Israel to sing to the Lord. I still like the psalms, don't you? Every one of those psalms have music to them. And... Uh, they're, they're spiritual songs for Israel to sing to the Lord. We can sing them to the Lord today. Hymns are songs filled with scriptural and doctrinal truths that will draw us to the Lord. We were singing that song tonight, uh, Onward Christian Soldier. And, and boy, I start paying attention to them words about beating and whooping up on the devil and, 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 and him going to hell. I started to jump up and run. If I hadn't had to pay for it tomorrow, I would have. Amen. Those old hymns have got some meaning to them. They got some meat on them. Say amen. Meat on them is the difference between going to Kentucky Fried Chicken and the Apple Market. I got a chicken leg at Kentucky Fried Chicken the other day. Look somebody eat like somebody eating before I got it. <laughs> Terrible. Awful. But you go to some of them other places, boy, they have them big old, look like rooster legs. Say amen. That's the kind I want. Give me that rooster leg. Amen. I want to know something got some meat on it. Hey, them hymns compared to them 7-Eleven songs. Oh, yeah, here it comes. 7-Eleven songs. That's them songs that says the same thing seven times, 11 times over. Drive you crazy. They ain't got no meat on them like on with Christian soldier. Amen? That's got some meat to it. Psalms, hymns, and listen to spiritual songs are filled with praise and worship for the one we love and adore. That's why we sing in church. We sing to him because he loves to hear you sing. When me and Kelly was little, I would not tell this, but y'all look like y'all need some help. 
My mom had just bought a fireplace set at Best Products. Nice gold fire set place. And had the screen, had them things where you pull it one way and the screen opens up and you pull it the other way and the screen closes. Oh, my mama thought she was living in the big time. Then bought her that nice fireplace set. And uh, me and Kelly got in there and Ruby done get, brought mama stereo down there and put it in front of the window. And uh, Ruby done put on some records and me and Kelly was using them things what you draw things for for microphones. And me and Kelly got to singing. Ruby sitting there just enjoying it. Mama said, y'all cut that racket out. Ruby said, shut up, I'm listening to them. <laughs> Amen. She didn't care how it sounded. We was using them things from microwaves. We just, I had on some old records from the uh, gospel singing Jubilee, and we were just singing up a storm. Hey, God doesn't care about your voice. He just wants to hear you sing. He just wants to hear you say, I love you. I appreciate you. And we ought to tell him that. We sing, it blesses not only ourselves, but the Lord who hears us. Gospel music draws our attention to him and our heart toward him and our desire to him to serve him. That in return humbles us and makes us surrender to him so that God's hand can do all this through us. Said all that to say this. Let's go home and enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living. Let's let God put his hand on us. Let's let God do for us what we can't do for ourselves. And I'll tell you one thing. That's why the church ought to always, ought to always be a happy place. Say amen. amen. We ought to be happy people. They don't like that song, Diane, but I do. God loves happy people. I like that song. Make them sing it again for too long just for me and you to aggravate them. Say amen. God loves happy people. The devil loves sad people. The devil loves agitated people. Let's just don't give him an ounce of credit. Let's just thank God. You know, if you're sitting in here tonight, you're blessed more than most people in the world. Just to be in the house of God, under the word of God, with the people of God, seeking the face of God, seeking the help of God. And here's the most wonderful thing, and I'll close. It's wonderful to know we can come here and seek him and we can find him. If you just look for him, you'll find him. If you come to church and look for trouble, you'll find him. So, uh, uh, Jamie's right over there. If you come to church looking for trouble, you'll find him. But if you come to church looking for God, you'll find him first. I'd rather have God. Say amen. Stand your feet. Our Father, we come to you tonight thanking you for being our Lord. We praise you for allowing us the privilege to be saved so that the hand of God can be upon our lives. We're so thankful, Lord, that you've saved us, you've redeemed us, you've restored us, and Lord, now we have revival in our heart and our life, and Lord, we can realize things we've never saw before, wonders and miracles if we'll just have Christian character that comes from prayer and the Word of God. And, Lord, you'll place your hand upon us, and we don't deserve that. Lord, I'll admit that right off. We don't deserve your hand of blessing, hand of leadership, hand of guidance, hand of blessing, hand of power, hand of anointing. We thank you that you allow us the privilege to be a vessel of honor unto you. But, God, help us realize more every day how much we need you and how, Lord, we need to humble ourselves, surrender ourselves, I can just love you more. Lord, I want to love you more than I ever have before. You're so easy to adore. Lord, I want to love you more. Help your people just come say that to you tonight. Lord, if that's all they do is come to this altar and just say, I love you and I adore you. Surrender their heart to you. And help us leave here and come back next Sunday. Bring somebody else with us. And Lord, see other people saved and lives changed. May this be the house of praise, the house of prayer, and the house of preaching. That, Lord, when you come back, you'll find our lamps trimmed and burning. Lord, take this invitation. Speak to every heart, I pray. With heads bowed, eyes closed, many are already moving. Why don't you come with them? Just tell the Lord you love him. Just say, Lord, I love you more than I ever had before. 